James Cameron is one of my favorite filmmakers of all time and one of the most celebrated filmmakers ever, for better or worse. And he's got a new movie coming out in December and I want to talk about his filmography. This is not the right movie to be talking about. What's going on everyone? Welcome to my director's review series of James Cameron movie reviews leading up to Avatar Way of the Water. Yes, Bari reviewed The Abyss back a few years ago. This is going to be mainly focused from his not so directorial debut from Piranha all the way up to revisit reviews of Titanic and Avatar and I'm going to include his two documentaries of course. So we're starting this thing off with the movie he disowns and that is piranha 2. so now this is a sequel to the original piranha released back in the 70s directed by joe dante and this is of course according to the credits at least his first directed film but this movie has a very big knowledge of a trouble production. This was when James Cameron was starting out. He was working at the time as a special effects coordinator for Roger Corman until when the producer of this movie, he fired his predecessor and he hired James Cameron to do it. And this movie went through a very troubled production, of course. This movie had a lot of things in going for it. He was fired two weeks after production, but his was given credit only for legal reasons. And at first, I wasn't so sure I was going to put this in the review series, but I said, you know what? It's James Cameron. I want to talk about his filmography. We're going to include it. A lot of behind the scenes drama it is well documented that the producer of this movie had a lot of studio mandating. He was given this movie to an Italian crew who didn't understand what James Cameron was trying to do. Very, very much in the process of the editing process. He prevented James Cameron from viewing any footage. Difficulties arising from an unusual amount of creative control. It's no wonder why James Cameron disowns this movie as much as he does. And let me tell you something. Usually when I go into a movie that everyone says was bad, sometimes I like to be in the minority, of course. Or sometimes I would probably somewhat agree, like, that movie wasn't that great, but I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is. At the very minimum, it's just average. Or sometimes I could end up being in the minority where I actually quite enjoy it. But, but definitely see his problems. There is absolutely no question why James Cameron hates this movie the way it does. This is not just a bad movie. This is a load of barnacles. It's that fucking terrible. The premise of Piranha 2 despawning is genetically modified piranhas are let loose at a Caribbean resort and a scuba instructor and her scientist boyfriend attempts to battle the 2D terrors. Of course this is somewhat directed by James Cameron but not really based on characters from the, from the first movie by John Sales and Richard Robinson. And let me tell you something, I actually quite enjoy the first Piranha. I watched it back last year for Halloween month by Joe Dante. It's not a Jaws knockoff, but I enjoy it for how fun, how silly B horror it is. It is a parody of Jaws, but I enjoy it. And I actually don't mind the 2010 remake. It's a guilty pleasure. I hate almost every single thing about this movie this is one of not only one of the worst movies i've ever seen but this is in competition for one of the most hated sequels i've seen if i had to make a list of the worst sequels ever made updated this would definitely be at the top of the list. Starting off with the positives, shall we? And the only few I have. This is not all James Cameron's faults. So, I will say for the whatever little scenes he had, 
You can tell he does have a promising start. The music overall is fine. I did enjoy the score also. There are a few of these actors who are doing the best they can with what they are given, including a young Lance Hirogson. E but even at times throughout the course of this movie, he looks very disinterested. Like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, Lance Hirogson has gone on to be one of the greatest actors like alien stuff like aliens and everything else which i will talk revisit about that one when we get to it but this has to be one of the most egregious examples of not a very promising start but he does the best he can for this some unintentionally funny moments and there were a few moments i was kind of entertained this entire movie is just abysmal from start to finish the directing like i said this doesn't even feel like james cameron directed this it feels like someone else just took the director's chair from him and they just like go make a whole another movie and you definitely can tell in over the course of this movie because the directing overall is terrible so egregious and so nonsensical that you can't even enjoy it as what it is supposed to be. First, Porano's strength was through his direction and it was being self-aware. This movie takes the opposite approach and you don't even have a very atmospheric tone. You don't even have the interesting strike of embracing who it is. At times, this feels like it's trying to be a legit fucking scary movie. And with a concept like Piranhas, this is supposed to be a horror comedy that is self-aware, that is taking advantage of being unintentionally hilarious. And this movie does not even go for that. This movie is... I swear to God, it feels like a hodgepodge of direct technical aspects in this movie. I know this was the 70s, the 80s, okay? Hear me out. There is a difference between working with the budget you have and making it look good and making it look like a fucking fan film. And this movie from the 70s, it looks like a fucking fan film. Effects are terrible. It's god awful. It's the creature designs, the way they look. The way they move around is like, wh who was on set looking at this? How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? And I re respect the, the fact that this is the 80s, but this looks like, the, the effects look like a fucking fan film. Very cheap as fuck looking in here. And you definitely feel that in this production. Yeah. The horror movies and stuff, non-existent this is kind of a bore to get through it is very boring i thought it, this movie is only eight hours 24 minutes and this is i swear to god watching this movie on the day i watched it to prepare for this review it felt like seven and a half hours i was literally in anger of how short this is but it felt so egregiously long and james cameron does have a habit of making long movies the guys got his problems so i'll call him out when we get to those i just don't understand what, how this is for like what is going on here what is this this shit gore in this movie and the when the piranhas are flying it is unconvincing as fuck it feels like they got a cheap pack of gore fake blood and the cheap some probably some ketchup from the dollar tree they, and they just spread it out and be like oops here's the gore what have you done honestly strawberry kool-aid or pink red kool-aid mixed together will look a thousand times more convincing than whatever these this gore effects were script is abysmal the characters are very one dimensional you don't give a fuck about a single solitary character in this movie it is like literally why whereas the first movie you had some interesting characters even the 2010 remake you have some interesting characters this movie there are no characters to root for and it is just like what the hell are we who am i supposed to care about 
if I don't have a character to care about, how am I supposed to care? There are some very cringy ass over the top moments where I just sit there like, no, 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 no. There's a lot of the cringy over the top moments in this movie are just so obnoxious to say the least. I felt like I was annoyed. There is a fucking scene in this movie, which I kid you not, when there's the piranhas, they attack this one guy. I tell you, it is one of the most abysmal freaking sequences. There's a scene where two women and a man, they're killed by a piranha. And I'm just sitting there like... <laughs> this movie does make me feel like I'm losing my damn mind. Because this movie... Oh my god. <laughs> movie. Also... I'm just gonna say this right now because I need to call out James Cameron on his bullshit here. You complain about Wonder Woman and other characters being sexualized in a different way to represent female empowerment while saying that they're not strong characters because they were sexy out clothing, which Wonder Woman is a sexy badass female character. So is anyone in the MCU or in other big franchises, especially horror movies and non-franchises. Non you complain about that, but this movie, you clearly contradict your own words by having topless women every five seconds. It's not even just one scene. It's like every five minutes, you have to have a topless woman showing off their boobs every five minutes. And I'm just in there like, what? <laughs> I'm literally laughing at James Cameron's words when he said that. Now, don't get me wrong, I did not write the rules of this. That's part of the bread and butter with these movies, besides the gore and the kills and over the top fun. And look, I'm a guy, all right? I'm not gonna complain about, 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 seeing, about, about seeing female nudity in the film. I'm not even gonna complain about seeing, seeing sexuality in the movie. But the way it's done here is egregiously bad and is almost insufferable to the point where it's just like, no, James Cameron, no, I do not agree with you this time. And you could have totally removed those scenes out completely. I don't have a problem with boobs or gore or blood over the top, but if I don't give a shit about your characters, if I don't give a shit about your story, and if it doesn't fit in a movie, I'm going to say something about it. I am. Finally, my last negative is the dumbest fucking ending I've seen in this. I've seen a lot of, I've seen some pretty bad endings. Endings that frustrates me, but this is one of the most dumbest, don't give a fuck endings. It feels like they just made this shit up on last day. Like, oh, this is the last day of shooting. We have to get this. We have to. Let's write this in and out. Let's write this in and out. And it's like. <laughs> it felt like that when you're watching this ending. This ending is fucking abysmal, is atrocious, and is god awful. This is a movie I would recommend if you're drunk or if you were friends and you want to laugh at something for a good 84 minutes. But. For me personally, I get very little guilty pleasure in this out of this. This is truly one of the worst fucking sequels I've ever seen. And this is absolutely no reason why James Cameron hates this movie the way he does. This is not his movie. Terrible characters, terrible effects, terrible story, terrible gore, contradictory of having girls show their boobs every five minutes. And the fact that this is just one of the most egregious examples of studio interference, even though this was a promising start for James Cameron, the worst, lowest grade is this movie is getting. This is a movie I would never want to see again. Get out of my face, Piranha 2. I hate this film. Well, that's going to do it for the video that you just watched. I will have my channel here, so you would like to see anything here. Click the channel icon, subscribe for more. I will also leave a video and maybe a playlist here, so in case you want to see what I'm about. As always, stay up, Assassinist, join the Assassinist, and you guys keep it cool.